Samsung sounding a lot like Apple, warning that their operating profit is going to fall 29% this quarter. So maybe this wasn't just a problem with Apple after all. So what are other tech companies saying about China? Liz Clayman's in the perfect location to take their pulse on China and other things. Yeah. The Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. So Liz, you just spoke to some Samsung executive. What are they saying and other tech companies about what's happening to the company? Yeah, it wasn't just some Samsung executive. He is the president of Samsung North America. He is the top guy from Samsung here at CES. He gave us a one-on-one -on -one exclusive interview, and you can tell they are concerned. Of course, Samsung warned, as you know, and uh, it was a shocking warning, almost as shocking as when Apple did it, but because that spark plug had already blown last week where Apple said, we've got a slowing consumer in China, so we're going to sell fewer phones. It was still very disconcerting because Samsung's issue is semiconductor chips. Seventy percent of their business is selling these chips. And then, of course, the other part are televisions and phones and washing machines and all kinds of household appliances. But they're getting hurt. And could it be a general global slowdown? Let me just tell you that Tim Baxter, who is the head of Samsung North America, flat out told me that it is just a one, two, three punch. It's everything from a slowdown of their customer in China. It is a global slight slowdown that seems to be perhaps gaining a teeny bit of traction. And then, of course, you have the tariffs on steel and aluminum and tariffs on washing machines. Remember when President Trump was one of the first things he did? He slapped tariffs on foreign made washing machines because Whirlpool made a big stink about it. And that has really hurt Samsung and LG, who's also here, another Korean company. But David, I remind you, both of those companies have major operations here in the United States and employ hundreds and hundreds of U.S. workers. So, you know, this is an issue here. So, Liz, I mean, obviously some of Samsung's weakness was also selling chips into iPhones, which they provide in this, you know, co opetition way. Right. Uh, what about other companies sort of within the chip space and all of that? There's been huge sell-offs in the markets over the past three months, so maybe there was an anticipatory factor, you know, companies like NVIDIA off 50% from their highs, but there's been a lot of carnage yeah, in that space. Exactly. So is Samsung at the end of this or the middle or the beginning or, you know, do we have a sense of where we are? You know, I'm almost interested in that question so much so because ARM holdings, which makes the design, the chip design upon which other companies from Samsung to NVIDIA to Intel, they license that and then they build their own architecture onto the chip to make it do what they want their electronics to do. ARM, we had this opportunity to talk to Simon Seagars, who is the CEO. This is a UK based company. Their designs are in a billion consumer products right now on this planet. So they're really kind of the forefront. They said it's serious. They said it is something that they are absolutely feeling from a lot of their clients and customers. And yes, obviously it's interesting that Samsung, which on their phone level competes with Apple's iPhone, with their Galaxy, you would think that they'd be in this vicious steel cage death match. They are on that level, but when it comes to chips, Apple buys some of their chips. So everybody seems to be exposed. It's really a linked global economy now where it's almost like, I, I hesitate to call it a Rube Goldberg situation, Byzantine, how about that? Everybody's uh, related in some way, shape or form. Uh, Liz, this is Jonas hey, Ferris. Let's get, I actually want to drill right into the most important, I mean, I know they make all this cool stuff and the washing machines, but let's talk about the thousand dollar phones because that's really, we saw this bad news at Apple recently, they're not moving the phones. Here's what I want to know because it's what I think every investor wants to know. Is this $1,000 phone thing that's now weak at Apple and Samsung, is that a canary in the, in, the, in the coal mine for the global economy? Or are people just not buying gold canaries for $1,000 anymore and they want to buy cheaper phones? <laughs> Jonas, let me tell you, as soon as Apple started to warn and blame the Chinese consumer and a slowing Chinese economy, I was like, maybe it's because Huawei and Xiaomi make better phones that are less expensive or equal phones that are less expensive. Ironically, Apple never comes to CES. They prefer to hold their own events up in Silicon Valley, as you know. But I've got to tell you, they were very smart. They got on everybody's tongues and lips. They put a huge billboard across the street from the Las Vegas Convention Center a day before this that said, what happens on iPhones stays on iPhones. Of course, that play on what happens in Vegas stays on Vegas. But everybody started talking about Apple, and they're not even here. But Apple, 
It's sort of that the fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars but in ourselves. The fault, dear Brutus, is in the price of your phones and the fact that other companies, including Samsung, might be able to make just as good a phone but at a slightly less price. Who wants to see a $1,000 handle? You know, um, LG also, in its disappointing report this morning, also pointed out uh, that marketing expenses to sell its phones have gone through the roof and that that's become very problematic on top of them having to pay these gigantic bonuses at this time of the year, which is, it's always interesting to hear about other countries' cultures. Um, but it is interesting that, that you mentioned, Liz, that the game theory is alive and well if there's a billboard across the street from the CES. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, you, you've got to love that. It's sort of everybody's kind of poking each other in the eye. But um, to that point, I think that it's extremely important to understand that every single company here is trying to grab the collective store shelf space of the retailers. These are concept products, a lot of them. And so they're trying to get out there and figure out a way to make people pony up now for that money and Tim Baxter of Samsung told us absolutely they're going to be charging more for their products. He was talking about washing machines and television sets but he said as long as we give them more for that higher cost we feel a lot better. To LG's point, LG is smart. They are expanding big time. They have five AI artificial intelligence labs that they have spread around the nation and the world and they are looking to really go big on artificial intelligence and make money off that. We got a one-on-one -on -one one exclusive interview with Dr. I.P. Park. He's the head of Lenovo. And he had told me specifically that he said, Liz, we're trying to make people's lives better and easier. And yes, artificial intelligence has its dark side and all of that. And then, of course, we've got to talk about data privacy. But he, on stage, had that robot. That's Chloe. Chloe the robot, who actually brewed a beer on stage last night. <laughs> at the MGM Park. I know, David, I kept thinking of you. You I like these it. craft beers? Yeah. Chloe will do that for you. But they're not just performing tasks. Those robots, and they've spent close to $100 million developing their robots at LG, those specific robots can learn yeah. tasks, yeah. not just perform tasks. A lot tasks. of those hedge funds people say that's where the future is. Yeah. We didn't even talk about 5G. we got to go. Liz, we'll see more of you tomorrow on all this. Great stuff. Thank and you David, very much. you got in Shakespeare. <laughs> Julius Caesar and Game Theory <laughs> and in a beer. segment. <laughs> and beer. That is some serious. Rube Goldberg, too. Very serious <laughs> stuff. Thank you, Liz. Good to see you.